Let's see. So when you do the sales comparison approach, what happens is your client calls you up and says, hey, I want you to list my property. As you can see here, it's a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot property built in 1990 and it sits on one acre of land. And you're like, okay, I'll be there at five o'clock to uh, talk to you about the listing. So what you do is you now have a couple hours to get ready. And what you do is you go out to our MLS system and you look at what we call the comps. Now, when we look at the comps, there are several things we have to understand. First of all, this is an art. It is not a science. And if you're a numbers person out there like me, this will pose a problem to you. I want things to work out perfectly based on numbers. That's not how this is gonna work. This is an art and the more you do, the better you get, all right? Now, the first thing under the principle of substitution you look at that's not listed in here is this thing called location. And typically the general rule of thumb is you want properties within one mile. That is a rule of thumb, all right? It's not a necessity because then you start looking at things like 24th and Talbot. That is south of the river here in Indianapolis. You can't go to 34th and Talbot. That sits on the other side of the river. That changes the value drastically. So you, as a artist, would have to understand that even though one mile is the general accepted rule of thumb, I cannot use those on the other side. Um, I can't remember the name. I think it's Fletcher Place that sits there by IUPUI, $300,000 houses. You go across White River into Hallville, they actually issue you a gun when you close there, all right? So you've got to be able to understand and use your art to understand that maybe one mile is not going to be allowed. You may get to go one mile this way and maybe two blocks that way. Woodford Place only has three blocks. East Drive, Middle Drive, Center Drive, or Center Drive, West Drive. You go outside of Woodford. It's not Woodford. What's it called? Is it Woodford Place? Yeah. <clears throat> Tecumseh. I had a house on Tecumseh that was given to me. My backyard, I could throw a softball into that backyard. It was listed at $600,000. The difference between that and that, you have to understand, all right? So let me ask you a question. How much are houses worth in King Park in Fort Wayne? I don't know, I made that up. I don't even know if there's a King Park. The point I'm getting at is your license allows you to list property throughout the entire state. Your intelligence should not. And this is the prime example. I don't know anything about King Park. I couldn't even do a CMA because I don't know that I can't go two blocks that way, but I could go a mile that way because I'm not familiar with the location. All right, so let's go back. So one mile is typically the accepted location. Time frame is typically within the last six months. Could be more, could be less. Depends on how the market's going. One of the favorite things I love to ask my new agents is, when pulling comps, which house is more important? The house that sold two years ago right beside your listing or the house a half a mile away that sold yesterday? The answer is yes. It depends. If the market hasn't changed, maybe your neighbor's house that sold last year is a better comp. If the market's very volatile, 
maybe a property sitting a half a mile away that sold yesterday might be a better comp. Once again, this is where the art comes in and you understanding what you're doing in your market and things of that nature. So now let's assume we've looked within our mile and our six months and we have found three comps and I've got them listed for you on the screen. Notice that these houses are a three, two, that's the slang for three bedroom, two bath. There are three, two, 1500 square foot property built in 1990 on one acre. One of them sold for 149,000. The second comp you find exact same property sold for 151,000 and then a third comp that sold sold for 153,000 now the key here is you want to actually use sold comps not listed anybody can list a property for anything they want uh, at any time so active listings typically are not your best bet is you want sold properties, all right? So if you see these three comps, it's real easy for you to now go back to your uh, client and go, hey, look, based on the principle of substitution, your house will substitute for one of these three comps. So your value range is somewhere in this area. Where would you like to list your property? And this is where they typically say 160. Uh, what? I'm sorry, maybe you misunderstood. And I literally have heard this. Well, Susie sold her house down the street and I'm a much better housekeeper. That was my favorite one. I'm a much better housekeeper than her. All right. So that's what the principle of substitution tries to tell you is the fact that you have three properties that will substitute for your listing and therefore they will most probably sell at one of those rent prices. Therefore, you can determine a market value of 149 to 153. Everybody see where I got that? What do you think these houses are based on these comps I'm showing you right here? What would you guess these kind of houses are? These are what we call production builder houses. Vinyl Village, throw and goes, anything like that. Because yeah. that builder probably built 30 of them in that neighborhood. And they're the exact same thing. That's why you could find comps that match it. Cool? All right, now here's the problem. Let's see if I can do this. Do, do, do. Just make some space here for us. The problem is it's not always going to be fun in the sun like that because what you're going to end up with is this where you get a three bedroom, two and a half bath on 1500 square feet of property. Now, if our comp has only two baths and this comp has two and a half baths and sold for 149 we must adjust it to match our two bath property therefore the value of that 149 is actually going to go which direction people down right because it sold for 149, but it's two and a half baths. So ours is only two baths. We must adjust that comp up. I'm sorry, we must adjust ours up or theirs down. And my question to you is how much is a half bath worth? 500, 5,000, 50,000? This is where the art comes in. If you are a South Side or a North Side person and you continually work in Westfield, you might be able to say, well, I've done enough listings. I know that a half a bath is worth about five grand. So I need to make this property or adjust it to our two bath property. And this second one, 
I don't know. This is not going to work really well. Uh, maybe is on two acres. Once again, I got to lower that value. And how much is an acre of land worth? Oh, uh, let's say two thousand dollars. Well, that one now becomes one forty nine. And we can play this game forever. This one's 1,700. How much is 200 square feet? I don't know, three grand. Or two grand, make the numbers work better. Now we can see that, th th so if this is true, now their value is here. Based upon you adjusting the comparables to that property. All right. Anybody have a question? Can comparables be adjusted up then? Because if you have two acres of land and they only have one acre, I always thought more, like you said, land is more valuable. So when two acres of land make the value go up? Right. No, no, no. We have to make these match ours. Oh, we have to make it match. And the what way to what we're going to list. Oh, okay. So if it's set on two acres and sold for 149, what would our property sitting on one acre sell for? The answer is less than one, four, or, I'm sorry, less than 151. It sold for 151, but it was on two acres. Ours okay. is only on one acre. So we okay. have to bring what this would have sold for if it was sitting on one acre, so we lower the value. Okay. Right? The way to look at it is what I was just saying. If it's sitting on two and it sold for 151, what would you pay for one acre? Less, right? I don't know what less, but you would pay less because the two acre sold for 151. If I bought a Ferrari for a hundred grand, what am I paying for a Pinto? I don't know, but it would be less. So I've got to adjust the comp down to meet my property that I'm getting ready to list. Now I don't have one on there, but we could do it this way. Suppose that we have found one that's a three bedroom. Maybe we have, all right. my. Writing seems to have disappeared. Suppose we found one that was a three bedroom, one bath, and it sold for 140 even. Well, now this is a smaller house because ours is two baths. So we would expect to pay more than that 140. So we would have to adjust this number up and we would say, how much is a bath worth? Well, I think it's worth five grand. So based on a three one at 140, a three two would be 145. So we would bring the comp up in that case because the comp is inferior to our property as opposed to the others that were superior. So we had to lower their values, right? That is the principle of substitution. And you would use all kinds of things. You could use square footage, you could use basements, you could use, well, most notably location, distance, age, the type of financing. All of those things would be what you would use on a comp. Now, what you would not use, notice, that in none of those definitions did we put stainless steel appliances, ceramic backsplash. So the fact is, it plays no role in comping a property. And that's what I was trying to tell you earlier. It plays no role because we didn't comp all the other comps as if they had stainless steel appliances. We don't know can't certainly go out into their house and look, but we do know it was three bedroom, one bath, 1500 square foot, built in 1990, all of that stuff. So that's what we use to comp on.